Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at rates of reaction and order. Now this is a very very common concept in A2 chemistry, it's asked a lot um, and the, the main basis around it are graphs and using experimental data to plot your graphs um, and then from them graphs you can work out something called order of reaction which we'll look at in a minute as well. So we're going to start with by looking at the two different types of graphs that you can have. Um, the first one is a concentration time graph, and your concentration time graph is, is the concentration of your uh, product or reactant, depending on what you're measuring, uh, and against time. So in other words, how quickly your reactant is used up over time, or how quickly your product is made over time. Either way, you'll still get a graph of a similar shape, it'll just be the other way around. Um, and the other graph is something called a rate concentration graph, where we plot rate of a reaction against concentration um, and both of these graphs we can actually work out orders as well and, and that's what I'd like to show you in this video. So we're going to start with uh, concentration time graphs first. Now concentration time graphs rely on you knowing the concentration of a substance and how it's varying over time and you can only get that from practical um, experiments. So you can't look at an equation on an, um, on an exam paper or in a book and decide if that is first order or second order with respect to a particular reactant. So the only way you can do that is by doing a practical and by measuring how uh, much a product is, how much of a product is made or how much a reactant is used up over time. So we're going to look at this one first. So I've got three axes because we've got three different types of graphs that we can produce um, for the particular for A-level chemistry. So if we start with this one first, um, we're going to look at concentration against time. So if you plot a graph, if you get results and you get your points, and your points will all join up in terms of a straight line like that. In other words, the concentration of your reactants is declining as the reaction proceeds over time. And um, if we get a straight line like that, we get something called, um, we call this zero order. And zero order effectively means that if we double the concentration, and I'll come over here and do this, so if we double the concentration of our reactant, then the effect on rate, the effect on rate is no effect. So effectively we can double the concentration of this reactant as much as we like, and that's going to have no effect whatsoever on how quick this reaction proceeds. And so that's why we get a straight line that's shown on there. Another graph as well, let's say if we, again, we do concentration against time, and um, we get a graph that might come out like this. So it's slightly curved, um, instead of a straight line. We call this first order. So I'll put that on there. Um, and first order um, is basically, if we take a, uh, a substance and we double the concentration of the substance, um, and let's say the rate increases by the same amount, we call that first order. So again, for first order, if we double, uh, if we double, if I can spell it right, double, if we double the concentration, then our rate should also double, and that means a reaction is first order. So we would get a shape like that, like a curve. Now, if we had another reaction, and we did a slightly different one, um, then, and we get a curve like this, and we plot our results, and we get a curve like this, which you can see is curved, it's not straight, so you can see it's still curved, um, but it's a lot steeper. We describe this as second order. And second order reactions are um, you might know, you might see a bit of a pattern developing here. So second order reactions is where we, if we double the concentration of our reactants, so if we double the concentration, um, the rate should quadruple. So if our rate concentration, or if we, if we double the concentration of our uh, reactants, then our rate should quadruple, and we get a nice steep graph like that. Now sometimes this is quite difficult to distinguish between these two in particular. They're both curves going downwards uh, because we're looking at the concentration of a reactant being used up, so it's declining over time, and um, they're very difficult to tell apart. And so what we can do is we can redraw these graphs 
um, against different axes and we see a more obvious difference between the two. So all we have to do is we can take um, something called a gradient against each one of these so we can work out the gradient there and a gradient is um, the difference in, um, in concentration divided by the difference in time. So it's vertical divided by the horizontal. Um, and we can work out the concentration all the way across that line. Um, now, um, sorry, the gradient across that line. Now the gradient in a straight line is going to be the same all the way across. Um, so what we get, if we plot against a rate concentration graph, then a zero order should be flat because the gradient is actually the same. So the rate remains constant all the way across. And that's because it doesn't matter where we take our gradient on that graph, it's always the same with it being a straight line graph. Now the difference comes when we look at, uh, when we look at something like this here with a curve. Now because it's a curve, we have to take the gradients at different points. So if we calculate the gradients at different points in that curve, we can get the gradients will tell us the rate of reaction. So we can, if we know the rate of reaction, we can plot that rate, what we've got from this graph against concentration, um, and a first order graph should get us something like this. Whereby if we increase the concentration, then the rate will increase by the same amount. So we should get a straight line curve. So let's say this one's zero order, and that one's first order, which is across there. And if we come to the last one, which is second order, again, if we take regular um, gradients, if we calculate the gradient across different points on this graph, uh, the gradient tells us uh, our rate of reaction, and if we plot them different rates that we've got on this curve against concentration, a second order graph should get us something like this, where it actually starts to curve upwards. So that's second order. And again, the reason why is because as we increase the concentration, the rate will quadruple. So it increases disproportionately. And that's why we get this curve that bends upwards like that. Um, you've got to know these shapes of graphs and you've got to understand where we get the two from. And you've got to be able to recognize um, the graph shapes with the orders as well. And you can see that between this and this, it's very obvious between these two, which one's first and which one's second. A lot more obvious than between these two. So these graphs actually have an advantage over these ones here, just for the purposes of identifying if a reaction is first or second order, or even zero. And remember, you cannot look at an equation in a book and work out the rates or the order of that reaction. You can only work out order by doing uh, an actual experiment, collecting your data, plotting the graph, and then you can relate it to um, your orders over there. And that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.